Yo, 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 what's happening, Fit Dad Revolution? Right, welcome back to Whiteboard Wednesdays. <laughs> I'm mega late, man. I'm about to do this at one o'clock, but I got a little bit held up. Then I came home thinking, right, I'm not too bad. I'm going to get on in time. I'll be fine. Only to discover that my wee dog has fucking ransacked our bedroom. And I do mean ransacked our bedroom. She's a fucking scavenger little shitbag of a dog. Um, so she decided to rip open all of her drawers and tear up loads of bits of shit. Um, this is after she destroyed Cameron's Christmas calendar this morning as well. That's going to go down well when I tell her at three o'clock, eh? Uh, little... Fucker of a dog, man. Have dogs, they say. There'll be a laugh. You'll enjoy it. Motherfucking dogs. <laughs> right, listen. Today we're going to talk about the four M's of fat loss. Long-term fat loss, right? Four M's of long-term fat loss. So before we dive into that, drop me a wee hashtag live if you're watching this one live. Drop me a hashtag replay if you're watching on the replay so I can see what time it gets to you at. All right. Hey, Mikey, thanks for tuning in. Hey, Alan, thanks for tuning in. And Daniel, thank you for tuning in. All right, so... Let's talk about the four M's of long-term fat loss, right? These are the things that you need to have if you want to lose fat long-term, all right? So here's the thing, man. When, when we look at any diet, if anybody that's, that's watching this has done a diet before, if you've gained a little bit of weight, or maybe you've struggled with your weight your whole life, like I, I know a lot of people have. I did previously, and I used to always struggle with the diet whole thing. Hey, Alan, thanks for tuning in, man. Hope you're well, all right? So starting a diet... Normally it kind of starts off pretty well, you lose a, a bit of weight um, and then you hit a plateau. Your weight either stops moving or something happens, like you end up having to, like a barbecue comes up or a, like Christmas, fucking Christmas, we're at Christmas time, Christmas dinner comes up, you, you fall way off track and then you regain all your weight and you normally gain a few extra pounds to go with it, all right? And then that cycle just continues. We go round and round in circles doing the same old shit, losing the same 10 to 15 pounds over and over and over and over again, all right? And we never really get any kind of traction. Hey, Gary, thanks for tuning in, man. All right, it's because we're not addressing these sort of four key areas, all right? And there's one of them that's really fucking important and we've got to get that sorted. And that's why it's number one, all right? So the first M of long-term fat loss, all right, is mindset. Right now, why would I be putting mindset up there? Why is why is mindset so important for long term fat loss? Right, just, guys, can you read this? Can you see? Okay, my, my, I know my handwriting's a bit shit, but can you read this? Is it the right way round? Can you read the letters? Just just give me a yes in the, in the in the comments if you can read it. All right, if I need to move my camera, just let me know. All right, so why is mindset so important? Right, so here's the thing. All right, most people will start down the path of of a diet. But they've maybe got a really shit relationship with themselves, all right? They've got a shit relationship with food, all right? So they're not maybe in the best place to start a diet. So for example, when I mean a shit relationship with yourselves, how many times have you referred to yourself as a fat, lazy bastard? All right, or how many times do you say, oh, I'm a fucking binge eater? How many times do you say to yourself, oh man, I'm, I've got such a sweet tooth, I'm so weak around certain foods? All right, like whatever it is you say to yourself, whatever that narrative might be, how many times do you say that kind of shit to yourself? Right, because here's the thing, if you're calling yourself a fat, lazy bastard, right? I actually had this with a client a couple of years ago where, where that was his narrative, and every time, oh, I've been a fat, lazy bastard this week, like, whoa, stop, man. Because every time you say that to yourself, every time you can, even if you're just saying it in jest, every time you say that, you've got this little belief that that's how you see yourself. It's called your shadow, all right? So it's this little side of yourself that's kind of being suppressed, and it's kind of deep down inside. It's how you see yourself. And human beings will always act in accordance with how we see ourselves, with what we see ourselves to be. So if you're continually calling yourself a fat, lazy bastard, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking, I'm, I'm a fat, I'm a chunky monkey, I'm just a greedy bastard, man, I'm this and that, whatever it is you're saying to yourself, then you go on a diet, you start losing a whole pile of weight and you're cutting out certain foods, you're maybe doing really well, you're losing weight, and all of a sudden there's conflict, there's cognitive dissonance. The belief you've got in your head of, I'm a fat, lazy bastard, doesn't match up with the, the, the actions that you're taking because... Well, a fat, lazy bastard wouldn't be watching what he's eating. If, there, if there's like fucking pizza, chocolate, crisps, beer, everything all around the place, a fat, lazy bastard would be saying, well, I'm not going to go for a walk. I'm going to get tore right in about all that. So all of a sudden, you've got this fucking disconnect. You're not, you're not living in, 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 in integrity with what you say you want and what you actually believe to be true about yourself. So you're only going to get so far down the line where all of a sudden you'll completely sabotage yourself. And you'll just go, ah, oh, fuck it, you know what, man? I, I, I had a blowout this weekend. I'm such a fat, lazy bastard. Fuck it, I might as well just keep on going. I'll get back on track next week, next month, next, whenever. All right? That's a, that's a poor relationship you've got with yourself. So the first thing you need to improve is the relationship you've got with yourself. All right? If you've not got a good relationship with yourself and you're doing all that shit and saying all that shit, you're just farting against thunder. All right? The next thing is your relationship with food. All right? So how do you see food? 
All right. So if you are a person that um, they really, really struggled. Like if some, if you start cutting out a certain food and you think, oh man, I can't have donuts because donuts are a bad food. All right. If you're seeing food as bad, I can't have that as bad. What happens when you then eat said bad food? You then feel really guilty about it, man. So you've got this, this overwhelming feeling of guilt that comes in because you're eating this bad food. And what happens when you then feel guilty? You're going to eat more bad food because you're then, your relationship with yourself, you're not forgiving yourself. You're not comfortable sitting in that feeling like, oh, I feel really guilty. I shouldn't have eaten that. I can't believe I've eaten that. I'm such a fucking useless, lazy, fat bastard. <sighs> Do you know what, man? I'm just going to go and eat those Doritos as well. And you know what? The kids have got chocolate down the stairs. I might as well smash that while I'm at it. I'm going to just fucking eat everything, man, because I feel so shit about myself. I'll just keep on eating. I'll keep on eating. And then all of a sudden you get to a point and go, oh, fuck, what have I done? And then that just continues. So you start the whole cycle again. I can't eat this because that's bad food. Like, here's a question for you, man. When, when, you're, when, you're, when, you're, when you're dieting, what kind of foods is it that you crave? Like, like just, just put, put in the comments, what foods do you crave? Right? So I'm going to give you a couple of options. So normally when you go on a diet, you cut loads of stuff out, yeah? You normally cut loads of things out of your diet. I'm going to cut out carbs, I'm going to cut out chocolate, I'm going to cut out bread. I'm going to stop eating bread because bread's the enemy. Hmm, all right, so you normally cut these things out. And like, I'm going, to, I'm going to just eat chicken and broccoli and rice. Right, cool, man. So do you ever crave chicken and broccoli and rice? Probably not. But do you crave the things that you cut out? Funny that. So Alan, so when you cut those things out of your diet, do you find yourself craving them? Do you find yourself wanting those things? Or do you find yourself wanting more of those things because you're saying, I can't have those. I can't have pizza. I can't have cheesecake. I can't have X, Y, Z because I'm on a diet. I can't have that. All of a sudden, this little voice in your head, this little kid, that's like saying to a kid, do not push that big red fucking button. Straight away, the kid's like, okay, dad, no problem. Big red fucking button, big red fucking button. Wink, they're going to push it. 100% of the time because it's taboo. I can't fucking have that. I can't fucking touch that button. Daddy says I can't press that button. <laughs> Watch this, daddy. Bam, 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 bam. They're fucking headbutting it. They're kneeing it. They're thumping. All right, and you're saying, well, why did you fucking do that? I told you not to do that. All right, same shit. If you think that food's bad and you say, I can't have that, it's become taboo. And all of a sudden you have the thing and go, oh, fuck, I shouldn't have had that. Now, I'm not saying you can have cheesecake and pizza and donuts and beer for breakfast and then lunch and then dinner and then wash it down with minstrels and then have some crisps and then bathe in a fucking bath of Smarties and fucking inhale them all at the same time. Of course, that's going to cause a problem. But if you're eating a healthy, balanced diet where you're eating, you know, a good balance of proteins, carbs, fats, you've got a nice balance of what you're doing made up of whole natural foods, but then you leave some room for a, cheese, for a bit of cheesecake. You leave some room to have some pizza. You leave some room to have a couple of beers. All of a sudden you go, well, nah, I don't really crave that stuff because I can, I can have it, man. I can have that stuff if I want it. All of a sudden you've made a much better relationship with food. Right, so you need to get these two things in check. Now there's a wee Brucey bonus I want to stick in. This isn't, isn't so much mindset, but it is fucking really important. All right. And it's sleep. All right. Most people are so deficient in sleep and this really starts to affect your mindset. Why? Well, first and foremost, if you're not sleeping, it, it does affect your chemicals. You've got a chemical balance in your body. You've got two hormones that your body produces called leptin and ghrelin. All right. And when you're not sleeping properly, your body overproduces ghrelin. Right. And I like to call ghrelin your greedy gremlin. So when you're overproducing ghrelin, it makes you want to eat. And it, and it doesn't ever make you want to eat salad and broccoli and all that stuff. It makes you want to eat sugary, fatty, high calorie food. Right. You're going to start stuffing your face with it because you're feeling a bit down. You're feeling a bit shit. So you're not your, your, your chemicals are out of balance. Your hormones are out of balance. When you're getting good sleep, those come back into balance. You start producing the right amounts of leptin so that after you've eaten, your body gets the signals that you're full. You're not then tempted to go and start stuffing your face full of pish, all right? In addition to that, if you're not sleeping, you'll probably find yourself being more stressed, more anxious because you're tired, so you're more ir irritable. You probably find that your willpower is nowhere near as strong. So if you're, only, if you're getting by on like five hours kip and then you're expecting to make fucking good choices through the rest of that day, maybe you'll start off with a bit of good intention, but then all of a sudden, John o comes into the office with a big fuck off box of donuts and then you go home and there's pizza there and it's like, oh, there's mince pies. Somebody's bought you, my, my, my wife's bought me like five boxes of mince pies. Fuck is all that about? They're singing to me. They're fucking singing. They're all different flavours. Chocolate ones, pecan and fucking maple syrup ones and oh my like salted caramel ones and like, oh fuck my life. They're singing to me. 
right? They're everywhere. So if I'm not making sure that I've got this good relationship with myself, like I have a mince pie, I'll have one for my pudding and I'm all right with it. I don't have one every night, but tonight I might have one. I did leg day today. I really pushed myself in the gym. So I can, I've got a couple extra calories I can play with. It doesn't mean I can go and inhale seven pizzas, but I could probably squeeze in a wee mince pie. All right, and that's then going to leave me sitting going, I've got that full box of mince pies here. I don't need to fucking eat them all in one go. All right, I can take my time with them. All right, but if I'm not sleeping well, if my sleep's deprived and I'm feeling irritable and I'm feeling anxious and I'm feeling stressed, then I might want to start comforting and I might want to start stressing because I'm feeling, ah, oh, I feel really anxious, man. You've not become one with yourself. You don't know how to kind of sit with those feelings, which is mega important. So automatically you try to numb them. You either numb them by smoking weed or drinking alcohol or playing fucking PlayStation or watching porn and wanking your life away. Or you do it by stuffing your face full of shitey food. We need to get comfortable with ourselves when we feel stressed and anxious because we're not getting enough sleep, which is then going to help us to improve our relationship with food. All right, so mindset is such an important aspect. If you're, if this is not in the right place and you just go and hop into another diet, I've got news for you. It's going to go tits up. All right, you're going to get so far down the line and it's going to go fucking pear-shaped. All right, so we need to make sure that this aspect is, is, is on point. Give me a hell yes in the chat if that has made sense. What is Steve saying here? I'm sleeping more, sleeping well more recently. I think related to what I mean. Yeah, boom, Steve. Awesome, man. So you've improved your diet. You've improved, improved your eating. You're over, I know you're restricted now with your back. You're moving more. You're doing the right kind of things. So you're starting to sleep better as a byproduct, all right? And then from there, everything else starts to fall in place. It's massively important. Awesome. All right, so guys, give me a hell yes if that makes sense in the chat. All right, the next one, all right? And here's the next part, all right? It's what we call mouth, all right? So my, look at my writing, my writing's shitey. I didn't get many gold stars at school for handwriting, I really didn't, all right? So the next one is mouth. So mindset is the first sort of habit, the, 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 the first M we work on, the next one is mouth. This one's pretty obvious, all right? This one is pretty obvious. So in order to be in a carry, and here's, here's the kicker, all right? And this, this, this part, this bit, is kind of related to this because this is where most people are skew with when it comes to diet, or right? when it comes to losing weight. Most people think that in order to lose weight, they need to starve themselves. I need to eat next to no food. I'm going to just starve myself. I'm not going to eat anything. I'm going to cut this out with that. I'm going to cut that out with that because you see it as bad food. And that's not your fault. The health and fitness industry, the media, has told you that carbs are bad. Carbs are the enemy. Don't eat fucking carbs. Like, like don't, don't eat protein. Like, fuck's sake, don't eat animal protein, man. Be a vegan. Eat fucking plants. F fuck off. Don't eat fat. Fat's really bad. Like, fat's essential. Fat's an essential nutrient. You need that to survive. Protein is an essential fucking nutrient. You need it to survive. If you're not taking these things in, your body doesn't function properly. All right? So the, the key is to have balance. And here's the thing. The diet industry's got you believing that you need to remove meals and drink this fucking drink my healthy shake. It's got all the nutrients you need. No, it doesn't. That's a load of pish. All right? So in order to lose weight, you need to be in a calorie deficit. First and foremost, calorie deficit. All right, now here's the thing. What? Oh. Deficit, spell properly again. All right, so here's the thing, right? Calorie deficit to most people means, right, I need to starve myself. I've not lost weight this week, I need to starve myself. I'm gonna eat nothing, nothing. Which then leads to a massive binge. Poor relationship with food, right? Massive binge fest, regain all your weight. Oh man, I've gained weight, I need to starve myself more. No, the goal of a calorie deficit Right, the goal. I'm not, I'm not going to write it because I don't room. The goal of a calorie deficit is to get you in a position where you're, you're eating as much food as humanly possible, while still losing weight, while still being in a deficit. How do we do that? Because we sway the balance of the foods that you're eating towards more whole natural foods. So we need to get you eating more, more good quality protein, more vegetables, better quality carbohydrates, the right, the right amount of fat. When you focus on getting the balance of your meals right and you eat the right kinds of food. The kicker is you get to eat more food. When you eat nothing but processed junk food all the time, and again, I'm not saying it's bad food, I love that shit, I love a donut, I love a chocolate bar, I fucking love a fish supper. No, I don't, not anymore, because they're too greasy. I love a Chinese, I love an Indian, I love all that stuff. It's not bad food, it's just food. But when, my, when I make up a diet of mostly that stuff, I have to understand it's very calorie-dense food. It's not very nutrient-dense food. We want to make up our foods of mostly nutrient-dense foods. All right, and when you eat more nutrient dense foods, you get to eat more food. So when you when you stack your plate up with vegetables, if you'd seen my plate at dinner the other night, I had um, I had these this, this little chickeny thing, all right, and then I had a couple of wee chips and a couple of wee chips 
And it, that's all I didn't have chicken at all. That's, that, that's pish. I didn't have chicken. It was two sausages I had fucking chicken. Where did I get that from? It was two sausage things. Two South African sausage things, all right? They're about, they're about this size. They're, they're pretty big, but they're, they're stacked full of protein, right? They're super tasty. I had a couple of chips, not loads, I had a couple of chips. And then I had a fucking mountain of broccoli. Oh, I had a whole broccoli to myself. One whole broccoli. And then I had a mountain of carrots. Loads of them. Right? And I started off with the carrots and the broccoli. I ate all of that shit. Then I ate the sausages and then I picked away and had a couple of chips. Left a few of them because I was stuffed. Absolutely ran, but my plate was full. Mostly of veg. All right, I got to eat more food. Whereas if I'd eaten just the sausages with just the chips, I okay, I'd have eaten more chips, but my plate wouldn't have been any, anywhere near as full. And I've eaten a lot more calorie dense food that's not quite as good for me. It's going to probably leave me feeling a bit drained. All right, I've not got, I've not got as much benefit from the food that I've eaten. So I've switched that around and had more calorie, uh, nutrient dense food. And I've got much more bang for my buck. I've got to eat more food. And at the end of it, I was full. I was like, oh, fuck, I'm stuffed. All right, absolutely stuffed. But with mostly veg, which is really low calorie. All right, so I managed to save a whole pile of calories, but I ate a whole lot more food. So the volume of my food was much, much bigger. All right, so the idea is not to starve yourself to death. The idea is to get you eating as much food as we possibly can while keeping you in a calorie deficit. Because the only thing that is going to drive fat loss is being in a calorie deficit. It's not cutting carbs, it's not cutting fats, it's not jumping onto Mr. Bojangles Super Magic Six Pack Shake. That shit's not going to work. The only reason well, it is going to work, the only reason it does work is because it puts you in a calorie deficit. The magic behind keto puts you in a calorie deficit. Atkins diet, when that was all the rage, puts you in a calorie deficit. Herbalife puts you in a calorie deficit. Now we'll phone you back. Right, intermittent fasting. Everyone's like, oh, let's do intermittent fasting, man. Yeah, intermittent fasting. Oh, yeah, it's cool. It's really good for your body. And that. Yeah, fucking great. Right, I tried intermittent fasting, man, and I, I do use it sometimes. But here's the kicker, man. The minute I do fasting, guess what happens later in the day? I binge like a motherfucker. I stuff my face full of all kinds of shit. And I'm just, it just happens. I'm like, I'm, I'm standing in the kitchen cooking dinner and I'm eating fucking hobnobs. I don't even fucking want a hobnob. Why am I eating that fucking shit? All right, because I feel hungry and I want to eat. And I'm like, Arr. All right, so intermittent fasting is not magic. Will it work for some people? Mm-hmm. Is it magic? No. It just puts you in a calorie deficit. The only thing that drives fat loss is being in a calorie deficit. And you don't have to starve yourself to get there. All right, so get what, what you're doing from a, from a mouth perspective, what you're putting down your pie hole is vitally important. Because here's the next part. If you try and do the next thing that we're going to speak about and just think that's all I'm going to do, but I'm not going to change anything I do here, you're going to get some progress, but there's going to come a point where you'll stall and you'll, you'll be farting against thunder nothing's going to happen. Right, because you're just trying to kind of pound your body to burn fat away. Yes, okay, if your diet stayed exactly the same and you just started adding in some exercise, yeah, you'd put yourself in a calorie deficit through the exercise, but you'd have to work it really fucking hard. That's what I tried to do initially. I tried to exercise myself into the ground and I didn't change. My idea of getting more veg in my diet was to have a fucking ham and cheese sandwich with salt and vinegar crisps on it and three leaves of spinach. <laughs> that was it. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm being healthy, I've got my veg. White bread, fucking lashings of butter, full packet of salt vinegar crisps, ham, loads of cheese, two, two or three bits of spinach. Mmm, healthy as fuck. All right? Mm -mm. <laughs> Massively calorie dense food versus nutrient dense food. All right? So you, you need to kind of swing that balance and stop trying to exercise the fat away. Get this part right and use exercise, which we're going to speak about now, to supplement the process. All right? So that's the next M. Hope that makes sense. Give me a hell yes in the chat if it does. All right? Next part is movement all right now here's the thing with movement all right so again when it comes to fat loss the first thing people will do is like right that's it new year new me whoop, whoop. i'm gonna go and run i'm gonna go and fucking start jogging i'm gonna run till i don't jiggle here we go man tits be gone boop, 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 boop. fuck all happens right for the most part nothing happens you're still around fucking six months later you've still got man tits you've still got a belly yep you've lost some weight but do you know what, man? It's just frustrating because you've, nothing, nothing's happened. Oh, I'm losing weight, but I've still got this wee punch. I can't get rid of this belly hanging over my pants. What's going on with that? All right, because you've probably not got the right balance in terms of nutrition, so your body shape's not really changing the right way. But also, in addition to that, you're just, you're, you're just fucking, your body's just, you're, you're trying to burn calories in the moment. You're trying to burn calories to get to where you want to be. It doesn't work that way. All right, we need to stop focusing on burning calories. So here's the kicker. Exercise is important, but exercise is important for different reasons. So I'm a, I'm a massive, massive advocate of strength training. Go and do some strength training, build some muscles. The more muscle mass you have, the, the, the bigger it can increase your metabolism, not by a huge amount, 
but it does sh it ha has been shown that the more muscle mass you have, the more calories you will burn at rest, all right? Because you've just got more muscle mass in your frame as opposed to going out running and burning calories in the moment. All right, we need to start getting get, getting that kind of base metabolic rate up. We want to kind of increase it as much as we can. All right, so when we start doing a bit of strength training, we build some muscle mass, which then allows us to kind of burn calories a little bit easier while we're not even moving, which is important. But here's the thing. Here's what most people think, all right? Most people think that... I'll put a wee underline under them. Most people think that exercise is the key. So they go out and they try and exercise the fat away. But then all of a sudden, they're, they're sat down all day long at their office. They're sat down first thing in the morning when they're eating their breakfast. They're sat down in their car to get to their office. They take the escalators or the elevator to get up to the, whatever floor it is that they've got to work from. Then when they come home, they, they, when, they, when they go to their lunch break, they sit down to eat their lunch. Then they come home, they sit down to have their dinner. Then they go out to the gym for a wee hour, or they run for like an hour or whatever it is. And like, that's me, I've done my bit. Awesome, man. It's awesome that you're moving. Exercise is great for keeping you healthy. And I think everybody should be exercising, like without a doubt. But if that's, if that's the only portion of your day where you're really doing stuff, it's such a small, small portion. And studies have shown that what really matters is your daily movement. All right? Your daily movement. Now, what I mean by that is how active are you through the course of the day? So if you're doing exactly what I just spoke about and you're sat down, sat down, sat down, sat down, one, that's shit for your back. That's going to really fuck your back up. Two, your, your, your body's just not doing what it's meant to do. Your body was designed to move. So when I speak to people and they tell me, oh, I'm really fucking tired, man. I'm just tired all the time. Like, how much do you move, man? Like, first and foremost, what does your diet look like? Like, are you sleeping well? You know, what's your mindset like? You feel stressed, anxious, all that kind of stuff, because that plays a massive part. What does your diet look like? Oh, my diet, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not drinking any water. I drink Coca-Cola all day and coffee. Like, I'm drinking coffee up till 10 o'clock at night. Okay, but I fall asleep, may bother. Yeah, but you're probably getting really shit sleep because you're, you're caffeinated out your tits. My diet's not the best, but, um, you know, and I sit down all day and don't really move much. That's why you're tired then. All right, so we need to get these parts into place and then get your body movement. Movement, moving. The more your body moves, the more energy it produces. All right, your, your body thrives on movement, so let's get it moving. All right, how many times have you ever said to yourself, like, you couldn't be arsed going for a walk or going to the gym or going for a run, like whatever your, whatever your thing is. I couldn't be arsed doing that. But I'd done it anyway. And did you ever come off the arse end of that and go, I feel worse for doing it? Like, unless you're ill, unless something went horribly wrong, like you've injured yourself, you fell over and cracked your head, like whatever. But for, for the most part, most people will do that and go, I didn't want to do that initially, but I felt fucking brilliant when it was done. I went for a run yesterday, and if you watch my stuff for a while, you'll know running's not my thing. It's not my favourite thing. But I went for the run, struggled every fucking step of the way. The run I done last week, I felt brilliant. Blasted right around. Was, oh man, like 28 minutes. Woo, 5k, happy days. Fastest I've run, like, forever. Went for my run yesterday and for like I got 15 minutes in, I was like, uh, uh, how can I get home? What's the fastest way for me to get home? My legs were heavy, I was breathing heavy, my head was fucking sweating. And I had this jacket thing on that my wife got me, but because I've just shaved my head, I couldn't get it off. It was fucking stuck like Velcro to my head. Look, for fuck's sake, I can't get this thing off. And the zip was up to my neck and I was getting myself in a tiz. Then negative chatter came and I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. Blah, 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 blah. The whole way around, man, and I hated it. I hit two hills, normally on the back of one hill, like I normally get up to it and I'll stop at the traffic lights and I have to stop because it's a busy road. So normally I look at my watch and say, right, I can't, I can't stop it because there's a whoop thing, so I can't pause my watch. So I'll count one, two, and I'll count how many minutes I've got to stand at the thing before the traffic lights will change. Normally it's about 30 seconds to a minute. Um, not fucking yesterday, some wee old lady, thank you very much, you, I'm really grateful for you, she'd already pushed the button. So by the time I got to the lights, it went to the fucking green man, so I had to keep on running, right on to another hill. Motherfucker, I thought I was going to die. So I got up that hill and I literally thought my life was coming to an end, like I was struggling, like my father, if anybody seen me, they'd like phone that guy in ambulance because he looks fucked. But see, when I got in the house, I finished it, I pushed myself through, I wanted to quit, I wanted to stop, there were so many places I could have gone home. But when I got in the house, I felt brilliant. One, because I'd completed the run and it felt good. I'd, like, there was loads of endorphins. I got that weekend, oh, yeah, fucking beauty. But two, because I'd mentally pushed myself through the thing to do the thing. All right, my body moved. I got my body to move and I felt awesome after it all day. All right, I felt really, really good physically. All right, so I felt really, really good. Felt mentally, things happened later and I had a bit of a dip and I'd done a post about that on my main page, but, you know, there's always tools you can put in place. But movement-wise, your body is designed to move. So you need to move. That's why it's the third M. You have to be moving your body. So look at, look at what you're doing day in, day out. 
Can you park further away from your office and walk in a little bit further? Can you go for a walk on your lunch break and take 30 minutes of your lunch break to go for a walk? Like finish your lunch, then go for a walk. Can you, instead of taking the escalators or the elevator, can you walk up the stairs? All right, start just getting your body moving. When you come home, can you get the kids to go out for a walk with you? Like what can you do to start increasing a bit more, uh, uh, including a bit more movement into your day-to-day -day, uh, living? Right, just get, the, get your movement up. This is why... You hear the whole thing of, I just eat less, move more. Great advice, but also really shit advice because it doesn't take into account this kind of stuff. But the essence of it is so true. We need to eat a little bit less food, not starvation, a little bit less, and we need to fucking move more. Get out and move, all right? Walking is such an underrated exercise. Then from there, once you're doing that, then we'll stick in strength training. All right, and again... You don't need to be going to the gym every day for like an hour and a half at a time, all right? Three days a week is ideal, plenty, all right? From there, maybe if you want to, if cardio is your thing, do a bit of cardio, all right? Do like, but again, you don't have to be crucifying yourself. My problem with cardio is it's difficult to progress. So if you want to get better at it or you want to like increase your, you have to run further or you have to run for longer, all right? So it's difficult to progress. Weight training, you can progress really easily. You're just adding a wee extra set or a couple of extra reps or put on a wee bit extra weight. Slow down your tempo. Just like there's loads of different ways you can progress it. Cardio, whew, to progress that, man, you've just got to run for longer, which takes up more time in your day. It's really, really time consuming, all right? But get your daily movement up. Get this up and then look at adding in some strength training. It's going to make such a fucking massive difference to your life and you'll feel so much better at it, especially as we get older, right? Everybody watching this, we have to understand we're not getting any younger. We're getting older. And as we age, as we get into our, our, our later years, 50s, 60s, 70s, if you've done zero strength training at all, and you've done nothing but sat on your arse your whole fucking life, you're going to be one of those wee baggy bones that's just walking about and kind of hardly hold themselves up. Has to hold onto the edges to balance. Oh, son, oh, son. Instead of that nice, strong, tall, fucking capable man slash lady. There's no ladies in the group, right? That, that, that's able to kind of hold themselves up because they've looked after their body. All right? So make sure you're getting these things in. That's why it's so important. Okay. But remember, don't just do this without addressing this. All right? Oh, that Ian said I can just exercise. I'm going to go and exercise the fat away. No, it doesn't work. Get this shit in line, all right? Get this shit in line and then this really helps to supplement the process, all right? Does that make sense? Give me a fucking hell yes in the chat if it does. Last one, all right? Last one. This is important. Oh, I, can't, I can never spell this word. Maintenance. All right, maintenance, all right? Maintenance. This is so important. This is, this is like unbelievably important, right? Why am I putting maintenance on there? Because it, the whole thing's about long-term fat loss. So of course we want to maintain it. So why is that on there? So here's the question. What happens when you finish your diet? What do you do when you finish your diet? So if your diet's 12 weeks long, right? I don't, I don't like using the word diet because we don't do diets. And with my clients, we don't do a diet. We're not on a diet, all right? We should be changed the way that you live. But if you're on a diet, what do you do when you finish it? All right, so you've done your Slimming World course, you've done your Weight Watchers course, your Herbalife course, whatever. Oh, I've lost all my weight. Woo, look at me. Yay, cool. I'm going to go fucking celebrate. I'm going to go and eat pizza and drink beer. And I'm going to have that muffin because I've been I've not been allowed that for months. It's bad food. I'm going to eat that. Um, and I'm going to eat the muffin next to it as well. And then uh, my, my kid had Mars bars. I'm going to go eat them. I'm going to eat fucking everything. Weight creeps up a wee bit. Ah, that's cool. It's all right, man, because I, I, I lost loads of weight. I'll be fine. I've reached my goal weight. I'm all right. I can, I can reintroduce these things. I'm all right. Maybe your movement starts to slow down. You're not watching what you eat quite as much. Your sleep maybe starts to suffer again a wee bit. I don't know. All of a sudden, because you've not addressed any of this shit, Da, 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 bad habits start creeping back in. You've celebrated because you got to your goal weight and then kind of poof, before you know it, you're going, fuck man. You know what, man, I'd lost like so, so much weight. I'd lost loads and it's just, it just slowly crept back on. And I'm actually heavier now than I've ever been. All right, because you don't know what to do with the diet after the diet. Like, what do you do when that finishes? Right, you have to understand that you cannot be in a calorie deficit. Um, what the fuck have I done? Calorie, spell in, deficit forever. You can't be in a calorie deficit forever, all right? You just can't. You're not going to continually be in a calorie deficit all the time because here's the thing, right? Who has ever done a diet or a weight loss program or whatever and hit a plateau where your weight stalled, right? You've, you've, you've gone however many weeks and then things have just stopped moving. And you maybe go three, four, five weeks, they don't move and you maybe go up and down and you kind of teeter along like this. 
you jump on the scale, oh, I've gained a pound. Oh, it's a disaster. Jump on the next day, oh, I've lost two. Fucking amazing. Jump on the next day, oh, I fucking gained three. Mindset goes to fuck. Relationship, oh, I can't lose weight. This doesn't work. Ah, oh, disaster. Right, nightmare. Right, your body adapts. Your body adapts to what you're doing. Your body will adapt. If you're starving yourself, you're cutting loads of food, you're like, oh, that, that's all I need, man. That's cool. All right? So what we do with our clients is we get like 12 weeks in, like, how, like we, we kind of really assess it where that. We get about 12 weeks in and then we give them a break. We say, right, okay, man, look, you've done 12 weeks. We've ran you over for 12 weeks now. Let's, let's have a bit of a break. Let's add some more food in. Let's get you eating more. Like add, add in an extra couple of handfuls of carbs. Add in an extra chicken breast at your day. Like have, have a wee protein pudding at the end of the day. And, and normally they go, Fuck, I can't do that. Like, I need to lose weight. I need to lose weight. I need to be in a deficit. Yeah, cool, man. We, we need to get we need to get your body adapting back up. I want you to stop training for a couple of weeks. Just chill out, man. Let your body relax. Just fucking let it let it let it do its thing, and eat more food for for a week, two weeks. Just just build it back up, man. Eat an extra two three hundred calories a day. And I'm like, oh fuck, can you do it? Can you do it? Can you do it? Now, what happens at the end of the two weeks? Fuck all. They maybe gain four or five pounds, maybe. Normally it stays the same, but they maybe gain four or five pounds. What happens when we then bring their weight back down? Here's the thing. You bring their weight back down into less of a deficit than they were before, but still a bit of a deficit. All right, so they're maybe still eating an extra 100 or 150 calories than they were previously. They start magically losing weight again. But then the key is, once you get to your goal weight, is how do you then adjust that to keep you eating the right amount of food to make sure that you're not regaining weight? To make sure that you're not fucking then just like like continually losing weight because having I mean, how much weight can you possibly lose before you you die? <laughs> you don't want to just keep on losing. We need to get you to maintenance, all right. So you need to get to a point where you can just maintain what you're doing, all right. And once you've got to that point, what's the next goal, man? Like once you've got fit, once you've got healthy, once you've got slim, what are you going to do with it? Do you want to just maintain that and stay like that forever? Do you want to start running marathons? Like what do you want to do, man? Right? You need to get to an understanding that once you get to the, the, the finish line, you have to understand that it is not the finish line. There is no finish line. We need to keep on going. We need to keep on moving forward because most people will get to the finish line and go, that's it. I'm done. I've lost all my weight. I'm done. Feet up. Yeah, cool, man. It's all right. As if by magic, they're never going to regain weight again because they've managed to lose it the first time round. That's why a massive, massive majority of people that jump into a diet regain all their weight, plus a few extra pounds. All right, so that's a shockingly alarming statistic. It's like 97%. It's crazy, man. It's wild how many people regain weight because they've not got this part down. And a big part of this bit is because they haven't got this bit down. They maybe start addressing what they're doing with their mouth. They maybe start kind of cutting back calories, restricting what they're eating. They'll add in a bit of movement. They're like, yeah, fuck it, cool, this is awesome. They get to the end of their 12 weeks and then they've still got that shit relationship with themselves. They still see themselves as a fat, lazy bastard. They still have that shit relationship with food. Oh man, there's donuts, I can't eat that, it's bad food. Oh, fucking oh, I'll just have two. Oh, I shouldn't have eaten that, fuck, I feel bad. <laughs> right back to the start. All right, so all of this works together. All of this shit works together, man. If you've not got it all in, and this, this part here, this is never ending, man. None of it ever ends. You've got to continually work on this. Right, you've got to continually work on this. And if you read my post from this morning that I've done on my, my, my personal page, like other than going from a run, which really helped me to feel better, I, I was on a roller coaster mentally yesterday. All right. And most people will watch this, like I speak, oh, you've got you've got you've all got it all figured out. No, I fucking don't. I've got no idea what I'm doing, man. I'm winging life. All right. There's a few things I've got figured out, but I'm winging it, man. I'm, I'm learning every day, I'm developing every day, I'm growing every day, and I'm working on this every single day. All right. You don't do one bicep curl and then all of a sudden you're Mr. Olympia. You've got to do them continually over time and then keep on going, keep on going. And then when you stop doing them, what do you think happens? The muscle growth stops. It doesn't continue to go because you're not stressing the muscle. You're not pushing it through its pace. You're not, you're not working it. And in fact, what will then start to happen is it'll, it'll atrophy. It will start to recede. The muscle will get smaller because your body will I don't need that tissue anymore. I'm not, I, there's no point having it. So the muscle will start to atrophy. This is no different. If you're not continually working on your mindset and kind of pushing yourself past your comfort zone, like working on that kind of stuff, changing your relationship with yourself, checking your relationship you've got with food, continually working on that stuff, you're going to just stay in the same old loop going round and round in circles. And then you'll wonder why every single diet you try just doesn't work for you. I just can't lose weight. That's my genetics, man. I've been struggling with weight my whole life. Nothing ever works. Nothing ever works. It's because you've not got the four M's in place. You've maybe got one or two 
but you've not got the four. You need all four to make this shit last long term. All right. Hey, Simon, thanks for tuning in, man. Um, if you were late, go back and watch this from the start. Dude, I think you might find it helpful. All right. So, guys, listen, I hope that made some sense. All right. I hope that made sense to you. If it did, give, give, fuck hell yes, that's a shite way. Give me a fuck eye in the chat if that made sense. All right. And let me know which part of it you feel you're kind of struggling with the most. All right. Which part of that do you think you need to do the most work on? Because, right, like I said earlier, man, unless you've got all four of these working together, you might get a bit of progress. Some people might. Those guys, those are the outliers, all right? So you see all these people on the success stories on, on Slimming World. Oh, yeah, they've done brilliant. Yeah, cool. Most of those guys have re regained weight. Some of them don't, which is cool. That's awesome. I'm, I'm delighted for them. And I'm happy to see people progress. And I always want to see people progressing. But the ones that don't and keep on slipping back is because they've not got all, all of this into in, in, in position. You need all of this shit working together to make it last in long-term change, all right? So... Anyway, Stephen, thanks for tuning in. Alan, awesome dude. So give me a fuck eye in the chat if that made sense. Let me know which part of this you feel you need to do the most work on. All right, like, and don't be shy, guys. Like, just put it in the comment. If, you, if it's your mindset, let me know. Comment down below and let me know. All right, if you hold it to yourself, if you hold it and you're like, oh, I don't want to tell anybody because I'm, I'm nervous, I'm shy, I'm embarrassed, you'll never move forward. All right, I'm telling you right now, the thing I struggle with the most all the time every day is my mindset. That's why I work on it. Going, going to the gym and exercising, I've got that shit nailed. Watching what I'm doing from a carry perspective, I've got that shit dialed right in. Do I know how to maintain? Oh yeah. Do I slip up? All the fucking time. But where I'm really good is I'm brilliant at getting back on track. Really fucking good at getting back on track. I can slip up like a motherfucker. You watch how much I slip up on Christmas Day. Oh, I'm going to eat all the food. But then by Boxing Day, nah, maybe not actually. Boxing Day I'll eat chocolate. The day after, I'll be right back on track. Right back on track. Training out for runs, proper, exactly what I need to do. I'm really good at course correcting. Where I need to continually work is here, constantly. So let me know what you struggle with, all right? If you hold it into yourself and don't share, you'll never move forward, all right? And that's that's a guarantee I can give you, all right? You need to be sharing so we can give you the help that you need, all right? So anyway, I could grab it on all day. I'm going to now eat my tuna sandwich and clean up the fucking mess that my little shitey dog made. <laughs> anyway, have an amazing rest of your day. All right, I look forward to seeing your um, your, your comments down below. Let me know what you're struggling with. Um, and then I'll, I'll reach out. I can maybe send something your way that might be uh, helpful for you. All right, so have an awesome rest of your day. Be happy, be healthy, be safe. And we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.